This episode is sponsored by me and Learn Light and Sound. We have courses on how to improve your lighting and sound for video. Links down below. Also, full disclosure, Aperture sent me the Storm 400X light and the compact Fresnel with barn doors. They have not told me what to say. They have not reviewed this prior to posting, so these are all my own thoughts. I haven't done a lot of lighting reviews lately because lights just haven't been that interesting lately in terms of new features or anything that had any sort of breakthrough technology in it. So just haven't had any interest in doing lighting reviews, but this one is different. First thing that excites me about this light and probably the main thing is it has the Blair lighting engine. That is to say it has blue, lime, amber, indigo, and red LEDs in it. It does not have any white lights, LED lights in it, LED emitters in it. And it is a white LED light that's tunable, but none of the LEDs themselves are actually either tungsten colored or daylight colored. That's what's different and that's what's interesting about it. Here's why. Most lights, of course, are either bicolor or a dedicated color. So they're either, they're usually daylight colored or they're bicolored or they're RGB. This is a color tunable white light that's special because it includes indigo emitters. And that has the same special quality that I miss from tungsten lights back in the day. And that is something called fluorescence. It produces fluorescence. Black body emitters like tungsten light, like actual daylight from the sun, have this quality because they have some of this indigo light in the spectrum. So the problem is, is that most LED lights up until this point haven't had that. And so a lot of times whites within the frame look rather dull. That's where tungsten lighting was always so beautiful to me. And here's a frame from a video I made back in 2014, so 11 years ago, with a tungsten lighting fixture. It's a 1000 watt bulb in a soft box. That thing warmed up my entire basement, which was unheated, after 30 minutes. And on most household circuits, I couldn't run very many other lights without tripping the breakers. And of course, it chewed through electricity. And this became a problem too in office settings. Even a lot of offices had circuits that would trip. So even for my corporate work, it wasn't always the best. But then in about 2015, I remember my first time going to NAB that year, 2015, I saw Ted Sim at the Aperture booth and he was introducing the Lightstorm LED panel. I think it was called the LS1. And it was probably the most affordable sub $1,000 LED panel that had pretty decent color quality back then. And I got one and was very excited to use it. And But it always lacked this something. It always lacked that something special that the tungsten lighting had. It didn't, it didn't have the fluorescence effect. And you see it especially with white clothing, white teeth, the whites of eyes. On tungsten, it always looked really, really nice. On LEDs, it always looked just a little bit dull. And again, these LEDs were nice in so many ways. They're super convenient. You can now run them on batteries. You could run a whole ton of them on a household circuit or most office circuits without tripping the breakers. You could do a lot more complex, interesting lighting designs because of that. But again, they still lack that something special. Here's a comparison that I shot with the Storm 400X at 5600 Kelvin. This is just a sound blanket. And here is the exact same sound blanket, exact same camera we're using the Canon C70 with the 600X from Aperture, which is our previous generation light, which is a bicolor light, but it's using the white chips. It's using a tungsten colored set of chips and daylight colored chips. And the difference is actually amazing. <laughs> CRIs are not that different, but here's where what's interesting is that at the daylight setting on the Storm 400X, the SSI, Spectral Similarity Index Score, is actually substantially higher than you would see on previous generation lights, where you'd often get something in the 73 range for most LED lights, quality LED lights. Now we're getting up to 87, so it's a massive, massive jump, and that's because of the Blair lighting engine and because it has that indigo emitter in it. There are some other features on this Storm 400X that, are, that make it really nice to work with. Let me just run through some of those locking Bowens mounts. So instead of your light modifiers kind of flopping around within your Bowens mount, which has been kind of the case with almost all the Bowens mount lights that I've used, now you have this locking mechanism that's sort of like a PL mount for cinema cameras, but it's for the Bowens mount. That is a pro and a con. Now, it will more tightly hold all of your light modifiers, but it won't use all of the existing modifiers. So for example, the Fresnel F10 from Aperture, which came out, I don't know, four years ago, three years ago, for their bigger LED lights, that won't work on here, just not designed to fit on here. So you do have to be careful about that. Nice thing about the 400X as well is that you can dim it down to 0.1%. 
which is really, really nice. And not only can you dim it down that much, it doesn't flicker at that. So I cranked my shutter speed or my shutter angle to 11.25 degrees, dropped the dimmer all the way down to 10% here, and we're not getting any sort of flicker. So that's nice. This enables you to do more sophisticated lighting designs. And one of the problems I've always had with some of the bigger LED lights, bigger, not, not the huge lights, but the bigger for the type of work that I'm doing, mostly interviews and talking heads, is that like a 300 and above, is that you couldn't dim them down all the way, or when you did, it wasn't enough to really be useful. You'd have to use much smaller lights. So now I can do more sophisticated things, and the 400X can just put that just the tiniest touch of light into a lighting design to kind of finish it off, which is really nice. It does have some weatherproofing. It's IP65 rated, so if it's out in the rain, it's probably going to be just fine. It has full plus green and minus green tunability, meaning to you could get the equivalent of a full green gel or a magenta gel. And it also has color temperatures from 2,500 to 10,000 Kelvin. Interestingly, because of all of this latitude in doing the plus minus green and the color temperatures, it actually covers up to 87% of the Rec. 709 color gamut, which is interesting. So it's not an RGB light. It's a, it's a white, a tunable white light, but you actually can do color effects to some extent with it. It also has all of the control options that you have had on the more recent aperture lights, including Citus Link, Citus Pro, Wired DMX 5-pin, and CRMX. So any of those, if you have to integrate with an existing system or light control system, you've got those options here. Here are the color metrics for those who are into that. At one meter, the light output is nearly in the same league as the previous generation Aperture 600X Pro. And with the optional dedicated compact Fresnel, that focuses a beam from 40 degrees down to a very concentrated 15 degrees. I measured an exposure of F81 <laughs> when I was at 23.976 frames per second, ISO 800, and a shutter angle of 180 degrees. That's when you're at full spot. When you pull it out to full flood, which again is 40 degrees, we came in at F40 with the same settings there. So you're getting plenty of light. And in fact, it's, it's generating about as much light as, again, the previous generation 600X at only 400 watts. Really, really nice. Price comes in at 1060 USD for the 400X and price is TBD on the compact Fresnel and barn doors. So hopefully that was helpful. I think this light is probably going to be really well suited for those that are running small studios, like some of the work that I do, or for those that have small production companies. This could be your big gun and you could have some other smaller lights as well to finish off your lighting designs. Pretty exciting light. Get out there and make some great lighting designs. We'll talk to you again soon.